What are some solved mysteries? The disappearance of Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, author of The Little Prince, who was also a French reconnaissance pilot during World War II. In 1944, he took off on a reconnaissance mission from Corsica and never made it back, and there was never any evidence of what might have happened to him and his plane. Finally, in 1998, a French fisherman pulled up his net and found wrapped in it a silver bracelet engraved with Saint-Exupéry's name, and in 2004, a diver searched in the area and found the remains of his plane, which had apparently been shot down by a German fighter after all. The Windsor Hum Residents of Windsor, Canada, have been saying they could hear a hum coming from across the river in Detroit for the better part of a few decades. Well turns out that when a steel producer turned their furnaces off recently, when they were closing up shop, the hum stopped. People had no idea what the noise could be until the factory closed. Devil's Kettle Falls, a stream separates into two sections. One continues normally the other spirals deep into a hole. All sorts of things were thrown down the hole in an effort to discover where the water went. Ping pong balls, various dyes, it was even rumored that someone stuck an old car down there. Eventually someone came up with a clever idea. They measured the total water flow above and below the falls and discovered they were similar enough to deduce the two streams joined back up relatively quickly. The Siberian craters. As the permafrost melts, the methane gas gets released and it sometimes ignites. Forrest Fenn's hidden treasure chest that he buried years ago and left clues to where to find its location. It was found within the last two years I think. Here's a link to an article better explaining it. The Missing Feet Murders. For many years, human feet kept washing up on the shores near Seattle and Vancouver. A total of 21 were found. Naturally people thought there was a murderer afoot. Sorry. And their modus operandi was to cut their victims feet off before disposing of the body in the ocean. Turns out many of the remains were deemed as suicides. Turns out when you jump off one of the many bridges Seattle and Vancouver has to offer, your body decomposes, and your limbs detach. The foam and floaty material in the victim's shoes ensured their feet would float and get caught in tidal currents, this dispersing the detached feet nicely. Case closed. The Erebus and the Terror were found a few years ago. The two ships were part of an Arctic expedition and disappeared 150 years ago. They had a whole section of the Museum of History in Ottawa for it a few years ago, with some of the remnants of the ship. It was very interesting. One thing that struck me was for years. The local indigenous population talked about those crazy white guys trying, and failing, to sail through the Northwest Passage, and ended up resorting to cannibalism in an attempt to survive. Their stories were ignored for decades, but what do you know? The oral histories ended up being an important part of finding the wreckage, and they found cut marks and evidence of cannibalism on some of the bodies found on King William Island. The case of Adrienne Shelley screenwriter for Waitress. Husband came home to find her hanging in the shower ruled suicide. He insists she was happy and would never kill herself promoting another view of crime scene where they found a shoe print that matched a construction worker in the building. Sure enough the construction worker went to rob her and thought he killed her so staged a suicide when the hanging ended up being the actual thing that killed her. That was his original testimony. He straight up killed her intentionally. The Sailing Stones of Death Valley. Aren't we all just air hockey pucks in the wind, my friend? The pioneers used to ride those babies for miles. The bloop. TL. DR in 1997 a really weird and loud noise was detected underwater and everyone was all WTF was that? In 2012 it was determined it was an iceberg breaking and or rubbing against the seabed. Now if only we could find an explanation for the wow. Signal. Spasserbergs. Same thing. An airbird broke against the sky ceiling. 1947 and British South American Airways aircraft named Stardust disappeared. Its last message was simply Stendek. After an exhausting search, no trace of the aircraft was found. Four years conspiracy theories and talk of alien abduction by Wackers circulated. Till 1998, when mountain climbers on a remote mountain found an engine. Pieces of metal and clothing at the bottom of a glacier on the side of Mount Tupungato. Turns out the aircraft got caught flying the wrong way in the jet stream while it was flying at night and using a system of timing when to start their descent. Being in the jet stream reduced their airspeed in relation to the earth and they smacked themselves straight into the side of mountain. After which an avalanche covered the wreckage. 
The wreckage took decades to flow down the side of the mount with the glaciers. The glacier preserved the wreck so well that 50 years later the recovery team found identifiable remains, personal items, and could read serial numbers on the engines. Amazing one of the landing gear tires was still inflated, and that teams continued to visit the site for periodically as more of the aircraft, cargo, and remains of passengers are still emerging from the ice. But what is Stendek? Benjamin Kyle, man found beaten behind a Burger King with severe amnesia. It was a fascinating mystery until it was solved, then it was kind of sad. He had made TV appearances, had a couple of Amazon Reddit, but no one could identify him. When his identity was discovered, William Burgess Powell, there was still a 20-year gap in his life from 1984 to 2004. There's no record he had done anything. He had distanced himself from his family and had no friends, which is why no one recognized or identified him from his TV appearances. The death of Azaria Chamberlain. She was a two-month-old girl who disappeared while camping with her parents near Uluru. Prosecutors successfully tried her mother for murder and father as an accessory. During the entire ordeal it was insisted by her mother that Azaria was taken by dingoes, native wild dogs in Australia. This was disregarded, as before this there were no records of dingoes showing any hostility towards humans or causing any attacks or fatalities nearby. Several years later, an unrelated search not far from the campground found a child's coat of the exact brand and description as Aria's mother gave to the police, in an area littered with dingo dens. The parents' conviction was overturned and the case was established that in reality, she had been taken from her parents' tent during the night, killed and eaten by dingus. Sadly this was only ever a mystery to anyone who didn't pay attention to the local aboriginals who were pretty clear that dingus can, will and have carried off babies. It seems so obvious that even if dingoes don't normally go after people, Starving animals are still starving animals and will do things out of the ordinary. I'm still so angry thinking about the injustice done to Lindy. The whole idea that dingoes would never attack a human was such bullshit, but they kept repeating it. Now we've had all those deaths and injuries on Fraser Island since then proving it wrong. I feel so bad for Lindy, even without having the death of her baby blamed on her. People still shamed her for going out there with a newborn. She has said many times people still yell at her from across the street Stingo stole my baby. Imagine the horror of your child's death being used to mock you. The aborigines said that dingus would eat people if they could get away with it but those were just the natives. What do they know, right? Goddamn these kinds of stories really get to me. Like the kid that got taken by a gator at Disney World. Imagining one of my kids getting taken and eaten by wild animals. Ugh. I just can't even. While it doesn't give us who the Zodiac Killer is, just recently his most infamous 340 cipher was solved after 51 years. According to Oran Chak and team, the message reads, I hope you are having lots of fun in trying to catch Emmy that wasn't Emmy on the TV show which brings up a point about Emmy I am not afraid of the gas chamber because it will send Emmy to paradise all the sooner because I now have enough slaves to work for Emmy where everyone else has nothing when they reach paradise so they are afraid of death I am not afraid because I know that my new life is life will be an easy one in paradise death. Article about who did it how, he basically monologues like the ass crack bandit. Mark Felt was Deep Throat, the key source for the journalists that pursued the Watergate story. Met him once in the 80s he was a connection through a business associate of my father's. When it came out that Mr. Felt was DT, my dad called to remind me of the dinner we had when I was a kid. I don't remember much other than the intimidating vibe, the type of guy who, even as an 8 years old, I didn't need to be told to mind my manners. I just did because he was scary, and his wife wore a hat with a fake bird in it. What Dinocerus looked like, when I was a kid in the 80s, all that was known were the bones of the arms with enormous claws, hence its name, terrible hand, they were mostly shown grasping a small car because they were so freaking huge, the rest of the animal was a complete mystery, was it like a giant allosaurus? One that'd make the T-Rex look like a puppy in comparison, a few years later it seemed more likely to be ostrich-like and an omnivore. Either way, given how rare it is for fossils to form at all, I was convinced I'd die never knowing what this dinosaur actually looked like. Then surprisingly in 2014, they found more bones and it was just the weirdest thing. The Solway Spaceman, in 1964. 
Jim Templeton, a fireman from the English city of Carlisle, was spending an afternoon out with his family when he snapped to photograph his young daughter without much thought, but when he got home and had the film developed, he noticed what has now become known as the The Solway Spaceman. The photo shows what many people say is a person in some form of spacesuit. Kodak even analyzed the photo and their experts said it was authentic, lending to the spaceman theory. The spaceman was his wife with her back to the camera. He was only able to see 70% of the frame and didn't realize his wife was in the background of the picture, and it took nearly how long for his wife to realize oh yeah I was behind. So, in the early 2000s, someone posted new wave music that had been initially recorded off a German radio station on cassette around 1985. It contained about a minute of a song that became known as Stay, the second time around that no one seemed to be able to find any more information about. This became a pretty famous earworm internet mystery, until 2013 when folks on Reddit discovered the actual song and artist. It turned out it was a song by Swedish artist Johan Lindell titled Up on the Roof that never became any kind of hit, and up until that time, had never been re-released after the original analog release. El Dorado or the Lost City of Gold turned out to be a mistranslation. It was just the name of some guy that got mistranslated to the name of a city. Sounds like exactly what someone who is on the trail would say. In the 1970s, a number of Japanese citizens disappeared from coastal areas in Japan. After many years it was found out that North Korea had abducted them. North Korean abductions of Japanese citizens. In case anyone is interested, also go look up that time Kim Jong-il kidnapped a South Korean director and his actress wife as well as the SFX team behind Godzilla in order to make his own monster movie, Pulgasari, that's the name of his rip of Godzilla, Megumi Yokota still hasn't returned, she's been missing for 43 years, she reportedly got married, and had a child in North Korea, NK says she died, but there were issues with the evidence they provided, Yokota's daughter and her daughter did get to meet Yokota's parents, which is something good at least. The Andrew McDonald case. She and her husband Andre, yes, Andreen and Andre, originally were from Jamaica, they moved up to my town in Texas where Andre was Air Force and Andreen was a bodybuilding business owner. Andre was pretty jealous that Andreen was more successful and was constantly begging demanding that she make him co-owner of her company. She always said no, one day he had had it, and it away with her, the gym that she frequented, every single morning, got concerned when she stopped showing up. She was very close with the ladies that she worked out with, and even gave them a key to her house. She told them that if she ever went missing, that her husband probably did it, and they knew he had an attitude. So one day while Andre was out, the ladies went to check on Andreen. Her car was there, her wallet was there, but she wasn't. They found blood and hair in her bathroom. That's when cops were called. Cops showed up when Andre was home and asked about Andreen. He said she was in the hospital. They asked him, if she's in the hospital, how come her wallet's here? He responded simply, talk to my lawyer. They got a warrant and were able to search the house further. Saw more leftover evidence in the bathroom, and evidence of clothes had been found burned in the fire pit in the backyard, but no body. So all they could do was charge him with a missing persons deal. Andre was super snarky about it too. How he'd be proven innocent. How the cops would never catch on. Little did he realize how loved Andreen was, and how much Texas ranchers hate corrupt and snarky murderers. Crowds gathered daily and were given permission to sweep over ranchers' land for any sign of Andreen's body. Just as crowds started feeling defeated, and Andre started to see hope of being released, a rancher was scoping his field. He had heard coyotes out and went to see what could have enticed them. Sure enough, he found human bones, later identified as Andreen. So yeah. Proper charges were able to be filed, add on. So some ask why she stayed or why he felt jealous that she was more successful. Remember they're from Jamaica, the whole point of coming here was to better themselves, and bring pride to their families. So she was doing great, but because she was doing so good, his family was kind of looking down on him because his wife was better more successful than him, and then she stayed with him, mainly because she wanted to try and make sure their daughter's life could be as normal as possible. Sucks that that kind of backfired for her, but now she's being taken care of by her aunt and grandma who both love and support her. Where is the Titanic? 
Most people don't realize that half of the people in the world grew up when the ship's location was still a complete mystery. Now, it's old news. Where is MH370? I don't think they'll find it, unless they just happen to stumble upon it by chance. Not so much a mystery, but Fermat's last theorem lacked general proof for several hundred years, until Andrew Walls provided one in 1995. Maths postgrad here. This is a real interesting one. The proof is long, real long, at best, or worst he. Undergrad proofs may be 5-6 pages long. Now I specialize in applied maths, so perhaps it's double or triple that in postgrad pure maths, Wiles proof is well over 100 pages long. It draws upon many 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 areas of pure maths to the point where even actual maths academics may not understand every topic involved in the proof. Oh well, can't be any worse than the proof being left as an exercise to the reader. What's the purpose of the appendix really? It keeps your good bacteria safe. Dumbus Appendix Tried to Kill Me. Memories of Murder, a movie based on true story about South Korea's first serial murderer. A confession was made in 2019 after more than 30 years. He was already in jail for raping and killing his sister-in-law. Go check the movie, it's a masterpiece. Jesus and the Land of Tar, a few years ago, 2017. Comedian Nate Fernald posted a tweet of an enamel pin he had bought of a familiar looking friendly monster with the word Jesus written under it. He was unable to find any information on what Jesus is and the mystery took the internet by storm. The mystery kept growing as someone found a sticker of Jesus alongside other characters all listed as the land of tar. The sticker sheet was from a company called Denison. There were no Google results at all for either Jesus or the land of tar. With multiple people researching that was where the mystery was left off and people kind of forgot about it. But a couple years later it was solved. A podcast was made where they investigated the mystery. Got a hold of the former art director of Denison back in the 80s who referred them to a few potential artists and they found the daughter of one of the artists who had passed away and in her father's stuff was the original pencil drawings of the creators of the land of tar. It was never anything but those stickers. This internet mystery still appeared on lists for a while as unsolved. The only mystery left is who made the enamel pins. Which is still a mystery but not quite as big as who is this character in this land that seems familiar but that there's no record of. I have one that most people seem to not know about. Grand Duchess Anastasia was in fact killed with the rest of her family in 1918. She never escaped and the several women throughout the 20th century claiming to be her lied. The site of the execution of the Tsar and his family was completely untouched until 1991. Excavation found only 9 of the 11 expected remains. It wasn't until 2007 that two further sets of remains were found a small distance away from the previous grave site. DNA testing found that one of the sets of remains belonged to Tserevich Alexei and the other to one of his sisters. With this find, it proved conclusively that the entire imperial family was in fact executed and buried in 1918. Not a lot of PPL know, but Anastasia's remains were confirmed because Prince Philip provided DNA. He was a grand nephew of the Tsarina Alexandra. It's unfortunate they weren't found sooner, but they were moved from their initial burial spot. The bodies had been mutilated, covered in acid, burned and thrown into a pit. But the location was leaked so they brought the bodies back up and drove off towards a new site. However, there was a breakdown during travel and the bodies were quickly rebreed next to the road basically in the middle of nowhere and covered with debris. It was such a nondescript place. It's not surprising they weren't found for so long. In the You're Wrong About podcast they said that actually they were found prior to 1991 by some amateur sleuths in Russia. But because they feared what the Soviets would do with the news they just casually rebreed them and didn't mention it to anyone until the Soviet Union fell. Then they were like, oh look we just found these guys. In 1991, the exact year the Soviet Union fell. Not a coincidence at all guys. The Golden State Killer East Area Arpist Joseph James D'Angelo, a former police officer, who was sacked for burglary, and mechanic, American serial arpist. Murderer, burglar, committed at least 13 murders, 50 RS and over a 100 burglaries between 1973 to 1986. I was listening to the six part podcast called Casa File and they hadn't yet caught the suspect, but a year or so ago they finally got him after collecting DNA evidence when he put a tissue in the bin outside. 
it was a confirmed match, he was a real piece of work, before aping the wife, he'd tie up the husband and put some plates on his back, and tell him if he hears the plates crash then he will kill the guy's wife, so basically the husband has to lie there motionless while hearing his wife getting our read by that piece of sh, it's disgusting, he also our read a few women whilst their child, Ren were lying in bed next to her I believe he tied up one of the little boys and placed him on the floor before proceeding to Ari the mother, and because she was protecting her baby child, she would have to do as told, what a piece of sh, that doesn't even cover it, just pure evil. The pioneer gravity anomaly, space probe wasn't accelerating away from earth the way we'd predicted, but it didn't get noticed until the probe got way the f out there, next space probe gets launched, gets way out there. Same thing happens, WTF, how does acceleration not work right, does gravity just change really far away, turns out the heat from the radioactive death generator was all coming off the same side of the space probe, and the extra particle radiation gave a thermal recoil force resulting in an extra acceleration of no kidding about 0.0000000000874 ms2, over enough distance, it all counts. The radioactive death generator. The what now? The prophet hen of Leeds. A hen was laying eggs with messages like Christ is coming and people thought the world was ending. Turned out the farmer was actually writing on the eggs herself. And then reinserted it back into the chicken. Edited for gender of the farmer. Reinserted it back into the chicken. In 1981. A Soviet submarine ran aground in Swedish waters. This was a huge deal although the Soviets claimed the sub was in distress and didn't purposefully enter Swedish waters. Basically everyone in Sweden saw it as evidence that their waters were being invaded by spy subs. Plus, they did some snooping of their own and determined that the sub was emitting radiation, meaning it had nukes on board. So they went along with the Soviets clearly false claim about an accident and helped get the sub out of there, but panic was in the air. So the Swedes did exactly what you'd expect, and they prepared for more Soviet subs. I mean, when you see one Soviet sub, surely there are more, right? So Sweden developed advanced acoustic technology to detect subs and they created a plan to basically seal off their waters when they heard a sub, and wouldn't you know it, a year later, they found a Soviet sub, well, they didn't find it, but they absolutely heard it, and they cut off the bay and figured they just had to hunt the sub down. But after a month, they couldn't find it, they gave up and reopened the bay, but they assumed the sub found a way out, but they'll get it next time, and then it happened again, but they couldn't find it again, and then again and again with no clear pattern for a decade, what the heck. Thankfully, the Berlin Wall fell and the Soviet Union collapsed, so, no more subs, right, NYT, because the Russian subs were still coming, wait, what, okay. So now nothing is making sense, at this point, the Swedish military brought in outside experts to figure out what was happening, this included oceanographer types who were obvious experts in the surrounding waters, the military then played the audio evidence of the Soviet submarines, only to be told they weren't submarines at all they were fish, and the propeller like sound was water being released from their swim bladders. And that's the story of how the Swedish military spent 10 years and tens of millions of dollars chasing fish farts. When I was in the Finnish conscript army I was taught how to identify a sub from fish and seals. It was mindnumbingly boring to listen to basically white noise for hours when you were on watch. We all dreamed of catching a sub just for a bit of excitement. A Soviet sub ran aground in the town of Karlskrona. Southern Sweden. Think this was 86. This one also carried nukes with it. My father worked at the naval base in Karlskrona at that time. They had to stop an old man with a shotgun in a rowboat who were going out to get the damn Russians. Mary Toft. I mean, really, what the F, T L, D R, N S F W. Woman starts giving birth to copious amounts of rabbit parts. Woman taken to London and studied under intense supervision. Turns out she was shoving the pieces up there days before for the publicity. I've never heard this one before. Was anyone actually surprised? I have a feeling that would be the number one prediction of any scientists planning to observe her. Never mind. I just read the Wikipedia and man. I despair for my predecessors. They really fell for it despite some of the products having fur on them from what I can tell. 
Also it's massively disturbing that she had them inserted into her actual womb rather than just her vaginal canal. I'd guess she started doing it almost immediately after miscarrying so her cervix was dilated. Bizarre. Painful and really quite dangerous. Human spontaneous combustion not a real thing. It's where there was an overlooked source of ignition. Then subcutaneous fat is absorbed into clothing and acts like a wig basically they're a human candle. I remember a lot of OG and Solved Mysteries episodes about spontaneous combustion. I thought it was a real concern as a kid. The tomb of Jesus previously unknown brother turned out to be a hoax to try to sell the tomb of nobody for a lot of money. Bermuda Triangle Devil Sea. A triangle shaped section of ocean where airplanes and boats were known to disappear. Apparently most stories were embellished, and there is so much traffic that goes through the area it's actually a very small amount of vessels that go missing. Percentage wise.